Hello everyone, it's your favorite West Virginia now in space here, and one of the things I really like is the, is the Dishonored series of video games. Big shock, they're quite popular, I know. But one of the things I've noticed as a fan of Dishonored is that a lot of YouTube channels and stuff like that will use Dishonored art to show off, like, The Rogue, for example. Which is fair, they look close enough, they have enough comparison, I think it's a you know, pretty fair comparison to make. But it does lead to an interesting question. Could you replicate Dishonored in D&D 5e? Specifically, the powers. Because can they be done in 5e as rules as written player intended? Well, I think it can be. And, um, but really quickly, to set down some ground rules for this. One, I am aware this, there is a Dishonored RPG. I own it, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but that's a different, qu different discussion for another day. But for some ground rules of this, we are assuming you are building your Corvo or Emily-type character, or at least one with the Mark of the Outsider-type powers, or as someone you want to play that has like, kind of, that kind of feel to it, as an Arcane Trickster Rogue. An, an argument could be made for Warlock, but I'm not really going down this, and I'm trying to replicate the power and feel of that kind of character. And as a note, the Arcane Trickster has a lot of limitations on spells. Particularly notable is the only up to level 4 spell slots, and it can take quite a while to level up to that point. But we're mostly going to ignore, like, level, like, spell restrictions of among the wizard list, because the Arcane Trickster has a few limitations to that. But we're mostly going to ignore that, because they can also ignore that somewhat. And because it's not, and you, because you won't be taking all these powers almost certainly. That's just how I'm just doing it. You can complain down the low if it's an exact character build. I'm trying to give you options, not a specific build to build a particular character, if that makes any sense. And overall, um, we are covering the powers in a, that Emily and Corvo have in their own sections. And then we'll be covering those like more static powers, which won't necessarily always be spells. We'll get like there'll be some of them will be feats, but you'll just see when we get there. Let's begin. And of course, we have to start this discussion off with Corvo himself. Corvo from the first and second Dishonored video game. How do you replicate his powers? Well, starting in alphabetical order, Ben Time is both is hard to get the exact like time stop thing going, which just isn't doable. However, I believe e either or with using the haste or slow spell, both level three spells, or mixing together, you can probably replicate the effect of Ben Time pretty well. At least well enough that I think it works. Now for the next one, Blink, a iconic power of the series, is actually somewhat hard to replicate in D&D purely because it's a lot more free flow of how many times you use Blink versus spells in D&D. However, I think it's best replicated with the spell Misty Step at level 2. Dark Vision is a bit tricky due to how it works in that game, but I'm going to go with the Detect Magic spell at level 1 or and or the D Dark Vision spell at level 2 to help best replicate its powers in the game. The next one is Devouring Swarm, which is actually really hard as there isn't a summon animal spell for Arcane Trickster Rogues. However, I think it's best flavored with the Conjure Minor Elementals and just use it as a swarm tactic and quite at level four it's a level four spell and quite frankly i think it's better off that way because that's way cooler than just rats i'm just you know i'm just objective opinion possession power was actually really difficult as that kind of power doesn't really exist in DD 5e to my understanding i so i had to kind of work around what is the gameplay purpose of that power and then i proceed to kind of work backwards so i think the polymorph spell at level four is actually the closest representation for what that power is trying to do in the game but if you really want some kind of mental manipulation kind of power instead you could go with suggestion at level two i wouldn't but just gotta give you the option for the last power of Corvo, Wind Blast is actually pretty was pretty difficult, but I decided to go with Thunder Wave at level one since I think it's a close enough representation of what that was trying to do. But that's just my opinion. Oh well, I think we did actually pretty good here, get, be able to get all of his powers and reasonably done. So now we can now move on to his daughter from the second game, Emily. Now, believe it or not, Emily was a lot harder to pick powers for in this game, and you'll see why in a second. But her first power is Dark Vision, which is the same as her father, because it works the same, so, you know, all that works just fine. The next one was Domino, which is a very cool power in the game, if it's a little bit finicky, but I just couldn't find a spell that the Arcane Trickster Road had that could replicate that effect. Linking two things together just doesn't really work in that, any spell I could find. So, sadly, I had to leave Domino completely empty, as I couldn't find anything that was close enough to it that I felt was serviceable. The next power, though, I was able to find it was Doppelganger. Now, granted, it was not as quite as powerful as in the game, obviously, but I think Mirror Image with the level 3 spell is actually pretty solid in this case, as a way to replicate what that power does most of the time. 
Next one was Far Reach, which was a little bit trickier because it doesn't quite work the same as Blink, but I decided to give it the, consider it the mix of Mage Hand at level zero Cantrip spell, which is actually quite helpful as you, as an Arcane Trickster, where you start out with that power, and Misty Step for level two spell to replicate the, so that you can both bring things closer to you, take things away, and all jazz, but also teleport as well, kind of. I think it's a close enough approximation. Mesmerize was actually way easier than I thought. It's just the hypno hypnotic pattern spell at level three it actually that was really simple and i wouldn't be shocked if there was some parallels there like they purposely looked at that spell and making it maybe now the last one is shadow walk which was kind of tricky to do as i couldn't really find a good exact parallel so i had to win once again look at what the gameplay of the power is supposed to do let you go into areas not supposed to and that kind of thing so ultimately i went with the polymorph spell at level four and again for granted you'd have to find a creature that purposely mimics that but it will have shadows and such i think that can probably be worked with at least i would say for emily so she was a lot harder than her father but i think we did still a pretty good job all things considered now i'm going to be covering next the more aesthetic powers that both emily and corvo share in the game now for the enchantments of the game, because a lot of them are much more static powers than something you actively use, I decided I'd use feats to represent most of them when I could, and I felt that was a more accurate way of representing how they're used in the game. Agility is a mix of either the Featherfall spell at level 1, Athlete, Skulker, or, and or Mobile feats from, you know, the player's handbook. So ultimately, there are a lot of powers to represent the agility thing, and they're all decently solid, so you can't really go wrong with one or having them all together. The um, next one was Bloodthirst, which was a little bit hard, but I decided to go Savage Attacker feat was the best way to do it, which is a well, kind of underrated feat now that I look at it at least. Um, the Bone, bone Charm Crafting, uh, there's just no parallel I can work with here. There's nothing in the Arcane Tricks' trink set that I'm aware of that would let them do this. It's basically just, uh, like, I just, the closest I could think of was like an Artificer, but that's a completely different class, so I can't really use that. Reflexes is the Haste Spell at level 3 or the Alert Feet. Um, you could use both or just one of them to replicate it. I think it's close enough for what it's trying to do. Shadow Kill, very much like Bone Charm, I just can't find anything to do. There's just isn't a spell in D&D my that just instantly disintegrates someone's body except for you know staying on fire or something but that's not really a power like that strength the strength enchantment was kind of hard but i decided to go with the resilient feat linked to strength because i think that's the closest you could do that or just pump some extra points into strength right there and for finally the vitality feat sorry the vitality enchantment just take the tough feat the tough feat is basically this for all intended purposes and you can never go wrong with taking that feat so overall, with all the different powers, I think it's actually pretty good. I think you would struggle to take all of them with one character, but I think it's perfectly fine as you can't take all these powers in the game anyway, at least not on your first run. So ultimately, I think it did pretty well. It's not an exact replica in every case, but you can really, with all these powers, you can really get the feel of playing a Dishonored kind of character, and I think it works out pretty well. A character with these abilities would be really fun in D&D. So ultimately, I think I did a good job. What do you think? I'm going to turn it back to you. Please put your comments down below. Tell me what abilities and powers you would use to better represent it, if any. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Do you think I did a good job? Would you actually play this character with some of these powers? Or would you just think it's mildly amusing? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all next time. Yeah. Hey, why don't you hit that sub button? You're going to become a subscriber. Get to see my content quicker. Wouldn't that be nice? I bet so.